I think it was strip Scrabble we were playing, in fact. I'm talking <laughs> that was another way you filled in your time on holiday. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there's no television. Winston, yeah. do not listen to this, please. Why is it called a shuttlecock? <laughs> You could break into the in-laws' house and steal the parents' passport. F***ing hell. That is brutal. Spam. OK. Long seconds. How do you keep yourself occupied without television on holiday? I mean, we have done it before, Jack, many times. No, there was I mean, always I'm... a TV. I'd always managed to find some random sports channel and watch, you know, lower league football in the Spanish third division. I mean, I remember one particular holiday where we had got this villa in Provence with the most amazing view. Mm. And you were 16, quite stroppy. I don't think you actually came out of the villa in daylight hours at all because the Olympics were on somewhere the other side of the world and you just watched them with the curtains drawn. Mm. I think we instituted a no television policy after that. And I think we relied on, I think I may be wrong, Michael, here. Mm -hmm. Correct me if I am. I think just going to say one word, Scrabble. Mm. You remember that? Yeah. No. I would just drink yourself into a stupor. That would be my advice rather than Scrabble. Just get hammered every night. But you always got so cross with me because I always beat you at Scrabble. Because you never had any you words. Because you always beat me. Which you did also on holiday. Never. Never touched never. it. So it's I would say... Untrue. I raided the drinks cabinet. Touched anything of his. But your mother, when we did Scrabble, she used to put words like it and but and, like and and things. Word. Whereas I was, I was putting words like hypothetically and things like that. Jack's and she got more and more exist. annoyed. But all of this is But he used words, swear please. words mainly. Twat. Yeah, and, and things like that. I'm talking <laughs> That was another way you filled in your time on holiday. <laughs> oh, there's no television. Winston, yeah. do not listen to this, please. Well, there you are. There's your answer. I assume this is we're um, we're speaking to an adult audience here, or is this too not gross? No, it just goes out on the internet. Right. So we don't know who is listening to this. Right. So we just have to so hope. Maybe I should withdraw I tell withdraw you the other that. thing. You can't withdraw it. Right. You've said it now. It's out there in the world. I'll tell yeah. you the other good one, Jack. It's a badminton competition. Oh, yes. Uncover. You wouldn't get it on the board. No, I'm talking about ways of you can amuse yourself. Oh, I thought you meant badminton TV. competition. That would score very highly. It would. It would. Um, very highly. But. This is a bit, that's two words. It's two words. Yeah, it wouldn't. Because so. it's hyphenated. Yeah. Badminton competition. Yeah. And could you please just take on board, though, that that is a way of amusing yourself for a full two weeks? Badminton, badminton for two weeks. Badminton, badminton, badminton for two badminton weeks. Right. knockout competition. It might get a little boring after two weeks. Why is it called a shuttlecock? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. You've got I your phone. It'd be amazing if that's the next question. <laughs> <laughs> so why is it called a shuttlecock? How do you ghost a holiday romance? You change your phone number, presumably. Yeah, I mean, it's quite easy. It's the easiest person to ghost. Yeah. Because you, you go back home and then you're change in your a number. different country. Or you, you have to change your number. You, you could, just don't call them. Or the other thing you could do, of course, is that you could give them the wrong number hmm. before you leave. What about that? That's, yeah. a, that's a thought. Yeah. I don't understand the question. Ghost, <laughs> ghosting, dear. I don't know what it means. Well, when, quiet. When, you're, when your friends ghost to you, it means something slightly different, I guess, at your age. Slightly more sombre. What do you mean to daddy? What? I'm I don't just even saying. know what He's the been word ghosted means. by quite a lot of his friends. If you're ghosted Literally. by somebody, what does that mean? It means Seriously. You, you're, so you're seeing someone, yeah. and then you don't want to see them anymore, and then yes. you just basically stop messaging them, so you like ghost them. So oh, they're right. called. Yeah. So they sort of ignore. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Like okay. you've been ghosted by a couple of clients when they wanted to get rid of you. Yeah. Well, no, when I've got rid of them, sometimes they wouldn't speak to me again. Oh, really, yeah. How do you tell your mum that you're going on holiday with the in-laws and not her again? I mean, this is one for you. Well, this is going to happen soon, isn't it? You definitely tell her, and I suggest that that doesn't happen. What? Because she'll be coming with you anyway. Well, if you tell your mum that she's not coming on holiday and you're going with the in-laws, if it was me, I'd just get myself What, you just booked. turn up? 
I would just literally turn up on the holiday. That's pretty With unacceptable. I, I would literally book myself into the holiday. You'd gate crash yeah, on another bad. family's holiday yeah. because you weren't invited. Yeah. I think the other option would you be think to that's break a little in, desperate? You could break into the in-law's house and steal the parents' passport. <laughs> Hell, that is brutal. Well, it's quite brutal Those telling the your mother you that you're not taking her on holiday. Yeah, but then you you might go on holiday with her at another time. Not according to the question, because it said again. Mm. This is a recurrence. The right. situation. I would suggest that maybe you should just be nice to your mother and take her with you this time. That would be my suggestion. Or just don't tell her at all. Just go on a holiday. Best tips for surviving Alcohol. Christmas? Alcohol. Yeah. Keeping it quite tight. Very tight. New Year's Eve, 11.59. Out Boxing Day. You mean Christmas Eve, 11.59? Yeah. Two o'clock in the New afternoon. Year. You said New Year's Eve. Yeah. I mean, it has to be said that the older he's got, the later he's arrived for Christmas. Mm. It used to be that you'd arrive the day before Christmas Eve. Now, 11.59 Christmas. Well, I bumped into you that Christmas when I was putting out the Christmas tree. On Boxing Day. On Boxing Day mm, in yeah. the bin, you arrived and said, oh, taking the tree down, Daddy. So I think the secret to it is, as you say, a very tight schedule. Mm. Christmas Eve, late, late afternoon, early evening, Christmas Eve, out Boxing Morning, as he's getting the tree loaded into the car to take to the dump. Getting it in the wood chipper. Yeah. With all the decorations still on it. Yeah. And some of the presents. I don't like Christmas trees after Christmas. I've always said We've that. We've noticed. Get it in Christmas Eve, get it out Boxing Day. Mm. And the same goes with the family. Exactly. How um, will you ever recover from the embarrassment of being caught in a compromising position on holiday with your girlfriend? I mean, if it was you, <laughs> the answer is we would never let him recover or indeed forget it, would we, Michael? We would bring it no. up at any given opportunity. Mm -hmm. Worst case scenario is when you find your parents in a compromising position on holiday. That's a very hard one to come back from. Yeah. How do you cope with that, Jack? Just, I've managed to block it out. Therapy. Therapy. Yeah. Lots Suppress of the memory. What were we doing then when you called don't, us? Don't remember. Therapist did a very good job. Just blocked out that whole holiday. Really? I was in the room next door to you. Very traumatizing. It was fun. <laughs> you mm. told me you were just playing Scrabble. That's what all the noises were. Mm hmm. Well, we had you. fun. I think it was strip. Scrabble, we were playing, in fact. <laughs> Have you ever played uh, Strip Scrabble? No, I've never well, played Strip. I don't need to scrabble. explain it to you. Strip, yeah. And you burst in on us when we were playing <laughs> strip, strip Scrabble. Scrabble just at the moment when you were about to trip a word in. Yeah. If we caught you with your girlfriend in flagrante, whatever it's called, in what's it? In, I would where's that? In flagrante. It's flagrante. <laughs> <laughs> in that, <laughs> but... What's it called? In flagrante delicto or in delicto flagrante? Yeah. Know. What, it's a holiday resort? It's not a holiday resort. No, no, I think we did go to flagrante delicto, yeah. didn't we? <laughs> we did. It was nice. Yeah. In flagrante. <laughs> um, I would never let you forget it. I think I would get, literally get a lot of comedy mileage out of that. Mm. So the answer well, is, I'm afraid you have no hope. Never going to happen. No hope. Tips in mean, your first class upgrade. Oh, yeah, genuinely true. If you give them a pack of M and M's to the chief steward, chief steward, they could upgrade you. Can I just Barney say? Barney got upgraded. Yeah. My mate Marcus got upgraded doing that. I did not. I gave them not just a bag of M and M's, but a bag of limited edition caramel M and M's. Yeah, but time. so you went too fancy. I think you just and got to go standard. Forget all I got was a glass of champagne. Mm in my economy seat. Mm. Oh, that was all right. That was all right. It was, yeah, except that in the economy yeah. seat, I was sharing the row of the economy seat, literally yeah. sort of over the aisle and the row, and I think they were beh behind mm. and in front of me, with an Irish rugby team who were a little bit fed up that I was plonked in the middle of them in my seat. Did you not just crack on and get involved with the drinking games? Well, I just did not have the stamina for these guys because they were good. Yeah. Hilary, come on, you're not telling the truth because you got fed up with them and you came and joined me in first class, didn't you? <laughs> Crack out the tiny Isn't violins. True? Yeah. Poor mummy didn't get the upgrade, yeah. but eventually did. Yeah. And I went and joined daddy in first class. Yeah. And drank so I, I, could didn't actually ever get the I only ever got one ticket, but we tried to get a second. Anyway, the, the, the M&M's. Did you join the Mile High Inflagrante Delicto Club? You do know about Inflagrante Delicto, you see? Well, I do now, because yeah. you've said it. Can I just say, though, the M&M's thing, 
rubbish. Mm. Absolute rubbish. I think what you have to do It'll is... It'll backfire when you get on the one plane where the pilot's got a peanut allergy yeah. as well. Because they're I think you just have to wander, wander, wander mistakenly into first class as if there's any empty seats for a start. Well, just squat there. Just squat. Mm. Just take up residence and say, I'm not moving. You try that. See how that goes for you. Just wandering into first class and plunking yourself down there and seeing whether they are too embarrassed to move you back to economy. I suspect they probably will. I say give them M&Ms. Mummy says just wander Take in up there. residence. Yeah. Do you remember when we were on Moldovan Airlines, was it? No, in the first it was, class. It was Romanian. Romanian Airlines. Yep. And we were in the first class and the first class was just one row, row of yeah. two seats. Mm. So there was Mummy and me and then a woman who was sitting there next to us no. and then she got up and she said, um, would you like a drink? And Can you get the She was the right? hostess, the air. Oh, she was there. sat in the seat next to And that was it, just the three of us. And it was nice. <laughs> the plane was a bit rickety ham. Uh, I mean, I've just got to say this. She sounds like my kind of woman. Mm. I mean, we sound like soulmates. Bringing you a load of old crap from home. I mean, you never know when you're going to need it. When you get back home, because it never gets touched. So the whole of the holiday. I, I'm with your mother because actually it's a bit of a break from her going to the supermarket as well on holiday. Get room service. Eat out. It sounds like they're in you're a self-catering situation. Yeah. So you don't really want to be self-catering and going to the supermarket. So I say, just leave her be. Just let her do it. Because it'll make for a happier mummy. There Which of my children gave me that um, mustard. Oh, mustard. Was that? Well, it wasn't one of your children. Which it was of your my children? child's girlfriend, Tats. My son's girlfriend, Tats, yeah. gave me this pouch with my initials on it. Beautiful leather. And inside was a tube of Coleman's mustard. Because I love to take my mustard with me wherever mm -hmm. I go. I've got to say this, I think that's probably one of the biggest non I've heard, I've heard in heard. a very long time. The travel mustard but, pouch. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you get one of them for your mother. It's a thought. Have you got it with you now? I always use, well, I'm annoyed always, that I haven't. Is that what you're like when you leave the house now? Phone, no. wallet, mustard yeah. in a pouch? No, obviously not, because I'm obviously not <laughs> travelling and going to buy food and eat it. And no, because I would, argue, I would argue, back to the questioner, yeah. how many times have you been to the supermarket when you've been on holiday with your family? Probably answer zero, like, <laughs> and whit. So that's why she's taking it all, because whit and whit. No trips to the supermarket. Why don't you get initialed leather pouches for all of the items your mother wants to take with you. I like it. Mm. Spam. Okay, long <laughs> second, sir. We're done.